Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, we are outside today. Just kind of, a, it's a nice day today. It's a nice summer day, so I want to be outside. Um, but here are three watches crowned down. Probably, in my opinion, represent the best from all three of these companies. These are all luxury. I don't care what anybody says. These are all luxury timepieces. Um, some may be, you know, held a little higher in luxury than the other, but in my opinion, these are three top brands, you know, out there in luxury. Of course, it's not, we're not talking high-end luxury, so let's not, let's let's wean any of this out now. Uh, we're talking about, you know, I guess mid-level luxury and possibly entry-level le luxury, possibly. I don't know. I think Breitling's up there, though. So, um, anyway, these are, you guys know I love divers. I love dive watches. That's my thing. And these are the three of my favorite dive watches. Um, let's start with uh, this one here. We have the Breitling Super Ocean. This is the outgoing model. This was current up until a week ago. Model number A17366. I really believe it represents probably the best Super Ocean ever made. Um, <clears throat> You know, Breitling is a pilot watch company. I mean, that's what they they started making pilot watches, chronographs. That's what they did. That is their 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 niche. You know, um, not divers, but they've had the Super Ocean for many years. They had the Super Ocean Steelfish. Um, they've got the Aerospace. They have a lot of different models. Uh, Chronomat. I mean, there's several. Um, and the Super Oceans have never really been their top in you know line but i feel that the way this one was designed you know with the uh, winged bee there <clears throat> these loom plots the loom is just incredible on this watch the um, gunmetal gray outline the hands the hour markers i mean everything about this the the matte insert here i mean everything about this the bezel, how it's screwed in. It's got the date. The new version doesn't have the date. The bracelet is really nice. Probably one of the best bracelets that has have Breitling has done. And you know, I'm okay that it doesn't have a um, diver's extension. Um, I'm okay with that. That's what I was used to with Breitling. They don't have diver's extensions. Um, there's the back, the polished, the sides. Nice case, you know, brushed on to top, polished flanks. On my seven and a half inch wrist. Wears real good. And this is a 42 millimeter. Solid end links. Let's try to take it off. You know, gloved is always more difficult. But the new model really destroyed the line, I believe. And I've done a few videos on that. So if you guys want to learn about that or watch it or anything. But I, I really think that this is the best. This is the best Breitling Super Ocean made, in my opinion. So then let's go on to, we'll leave the Rolex for last. But let's go on to the Omega Seamaster. This is a watch that I've wanted for many, many years. And, you know, shoot, when they first were out, I probably could have picked one up at a really good price, but I didn't really, I, I, I was looking at the other Seamaster models, the Seamaster 300, the, the first James Bond, you know, watch. This was pretty much the, one of the second Omega. No, I'd say third. Let's, if we want to get technical, I'd say third, because the first was the 2541.80, which was the Quartz uh, Seamaster 300 which uh, was Warren Goldeneye. And then we go, we bumped it up to the 2531.80, which was the automatic version of that. And then this would be the third. This is the Omega Seamaster first generation Planet Ocean, which is model number 2201.50. And in my opinion, is probably the best Omega Planet Ocean, Omega Seamaster, Omega Bond watch to date. I mean, this is probably the best. Reason why it's the best is because the newer versions have the ceramic bezel, the, they're more bloated looking case, the dial, everything just looks way too, 
I don't know what you want to call it. Non, let's say non-toolish, non-tool watch. This is still a tool watch right here. So this represents probably the best Planet Ocean made. It does have the coaxial movement, the 2500. I think this is a C, 2500C, which the 2500C and the 2500D were probably the better 2500 movements. The ones prior were not so good. I heard there was issues. Um, the 2500C was only available in the first generation Planet Ocean. So the Planet Ocean never had an issue with a 2500 movement. They had the good C or, or D. So, yeah, cause there was four variants to the 2500, um, which the 2500 is just a, a 2892 pretty much with a free, free sprung balance, you know, the beat rate was changed to 25,000, uh, you know, 25,200 vibrations per hour. And then it has the coaxial George Daniels uh, adapted to it, which is less, less friction. And they actually last a lot longer with no servicing. I don't think this has ever been serviced and it's keeping perfect time. Um, and the beat error is zero. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing how well this watch is performing. Um, for as old as it, as it is, I believe it's a 2007 model, which my Submariner is also 2007, so that's kind of funny. Um, but this is just a great timepiece right here. I mean, it's one of my favorite. You know, back in these days, you know, Rolex was doing these tinny clasps, you know, which I like too. I don't have a problem with them. Um, but Omega had fully milled, machined, you know. I mean, and this is on my 7.5 inch wrist. This is also 42 millimeter. And the way these liar lugs hug the wrist, I, I really believe it wears better than the Super Ocean, in my opinion. It, and they're both 42s. It just seems like it wears better. Looks better on my wrist, I believe, anyway. This is probably one of my favorite watches right here. This has been since I've had it, and I haven't even done really a full review on it. This, is, this just seems like um, my favorite watch right now. Even more so than my Submariner. I love the Submariner. But I've been wearing this so much. I just love the way it wears and feels and looks. This really harkens back to the old Seamasters from the 60s. Um, you know, the open 6s, 12 and 9, you know, you see how that looks. Um, I like how the date where it's positioned. So your, your loom plots are all, everything's symmetrical. I mean, I think this is just probably the best dial layout. Very nice bezel, 120 clicks. The teeth are nice, um, you know, and that's something I didn't do with the Super Ocean. We'll do that too. But the Super Ocean also has really good action. 120 click. In fact, it sounds like the Omega. I like it. So those are, you know, well, these are really my favorite dive watches, but let's jump into the sub. So here's the sub. This is an 07, pretty much new old stock. I need to do a review on this too. I haven't done it yet. But um, this one here still has the stickers on the side of the case. I have not removed them yet. Um, and I will eventually. Um, in fact, this one's starting to lift off right there. But I mean, this watch is f like new. It really is like brand new. Um, it's got the 3135 movement. Um, what I love about it is it's, it's pre-ceramic. So you don't have that ceramic bezel you don't have the bloated case it's a 40 millimeter this is the last of the of the great real submariner in my opinion i think when they went to the 40 mil which i own that one the 11 40 60 i owned it for a while but i think when they went to that it took me a while i kind of liked it but then i stopped liking it just because the case is so square and bloated uh, I love the curves on these older ones i love the curviness i love that this still has chamfers the newer ones don't have chamfers. The new 41 kind of gives it more of this appearance, but it doesn't have chamfers. And it still has that ceramic bezel, which I don't like the ceramic. I just feel that having a ceramic just makes it look too much of a dress watch and not of a tool watch. And I think that this, you know, like I said, this all these all represent the best of these watches, what they are, the brand, everything. Um, they're they're staying true to what these watches are. They're tool watches. You think a lot of people go in with their you know ceramic Submariner in the ocean, you know their ceramic Seamaster in the ocean. I doubt it. These were still purpose built. 
Um, and then, you know, the, another cool thing about it is if you damage, you know, a ceramic bezel, you're going to be paying, you know, a thousand bucks or whatever it is. You damage one of these, it's, you know, an insert's $40, $50. Um, not that expensive and you can change them out. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm not sure what Breitling would or Omega would charge it. I'm sure Omega is about the same. I'm not sure about Breitling on these. Um, but this is, I mean, represents the best Submariner in my opinion. It looks like the older ones, but you have the loom, you have the newer movement, solid end links. You know, you still have this clasp, which I like this clasp. I don't have a problem with it. I really don't. Everyone, <laughs> I've had people complain about it and talk about it online. I've seen videos about it. I like it. Works for me. Works just fine. So, but yeah. So anyway, just wanted to, um, I still have to do a review on this 16610 Submariner and also on um, the 2201 Omega, so Planet Ocean. So I will, I'll get to all that. Um, let me, we're gonna do a loom shot on all three and we're also gonna take them out to, we're gonna make this a long video. We're also gonna get out there in the direct sunlight too so you can see these dials. So let's let's do that next. Let's uh, let's do that. Here, we are. Here are the three divers in direct sunlight. So we're gonna get some good. Uh, look at this. Look at that beautiful blue dial. The cool thing about Brightling is you've got AR coating on the top of the bottom of the crystal. Their finishing can you know they can really improve on their finishing. I think on this model. I mean, the polishing's always been nice on Brightlings, but they're brushing not so much. And I've said that before. I think their new Super Ocean addressed that. It actually does have, that's the only area, or only thing about that new Brightling Super Ocean I like is the they've changed the case a little bit. They've made it look better. There's like chamfers and stuff. It does look better, but not the whole watch because they've got some other funky things going on that I really don't like. So you guys need to check that video out. Um, but here is the Rolex. Sub, look at that inky black dial. Oh yeah, that is gorgeous. Who doesn't love that? Look at these chamfers. Look at their brushing, their brush work. It's just a great watch. I love that magnification too. Two and a half. And here is the Omega. Omega. Matte dial. God, that looks good in the sunlight too. Look at that. Wow. This is just like one of my favorite dials. They put the date in a place where they can still have the hour marker, the loomed hour marker, and it's the same size as the other. Or, or real close. It's just, God, such a good looking layout. They did really, they did it right. This, they really did it right with this watch. Man, this is definitely one of my faves right here. It is, man. Anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Um, I'm gonna do a loom shot. We're gonna close with a loom shot, okay? And we will see you next time around there is the loom of all three you guys can definitely tell the bright lane is so much brighter close second would be that Omega though and then the Rolex yeah I mean it's good but not as good as these other two in my opinion well anyway thanks again for watching guys here they are back all together. So if you guys own these watches or want to own one of these watches or have any questions or comments or anything, please leave it below. But uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.